Hi everyone, just excuse the noise in the background please. We've got a little bit of wind happening with a storm coming through so the roof tiles are shaking. So the purpose of this um, video today was to give you a little bit of background into using some products, um, some new products. So we've got some Ranger gloss paper. Um, it is a heavyweight gloss paper um, and what I've done is I've actually cut it down into small ATC size cards so that I can do some testing on it and show you um, what I've found as to what I can and what I can't seem to do well on it. So I'm using Distress Oxide inks today um, and just using the applicators that come with it. So the first combination of colours that I'm using in the Distress Oxides um, is Ice Spruce, Broken China and Faded Jeans. So what I've done is I've done two sets for every single um, test set that I've done. I've done two sets so that you can actually see what the Distress Oxide looks like straight on the um, glossy paper without any glaze on it. So you can see as I rub it um, some of the oxide actually comes off on my fingers. It's like a chalky effect. But to make this permanent so that it doesn't um, come off, what I've done is I've used a product called Distress Glaze. So all this does is it kind of makes things waterproof and permanent on this paper. So I tend to um, have a small applicator sponge that sits in my distress glaze. Um, I clean it onto a dry piece of tissue um, in between using it so that you know I use the same um, applicator every single time. So it's distress glaze. Um, but yes, this is the difference. You can see the difference in the colour when you're using distress, distress glaze on top. So at the end of this video um, I'll put some links to the products but also I'll put down um, I'll show you a little bit of the video where I was actually doing the techniques okay so that's set one to show you set two um, is wilted violet peacock feathers and spiced marmalade what I found this is the one sorry with just the distress oxide by itself no glaze on it and then that is what it looks like after glaze. So I kind of feel like you can actually see the different layers of ink and pigment together. The beauty of this paper is because it's a clay based paper, um, it absorbs beautifully. But I used a heat gun to set. One thing I can say to you when I was playing with it was that I found that if I had my three inks put out on my silicon mat, which is what I'm working on here at the moment, um, I separated the colours. I did a small spray of water on every single one um, using a spray bottle. But then um, I found if I actually dried, heat dried each colour after I pounced it through, I had a better layering and it didn't get so muddy and it didn't look so much like a bit of a hot mess. So those are the two... Um, test pieces for these colors. So then the next thing that I wanted to check was well can I stamp on this and what happens when I stamp on this. So this these test pieces that I did here um, these are um, using a set of hickory smoke, tattered rose and aged mahogany and then this is what I stamped with um, a little Santori gorgeous, gorgeous girl because I love these little gorgeous girls. Um, so that's what I used to stamp on top. But I did it with archival ink. Now I just want to apologize in advance that I did it with a massive ink pad because I couldn't find my small archival ink pad. So this is just what I had. So what I did was after I went through and I actually applied my inks like I did putting it down on my silicon mat, putting some water on it, um, heat setting it in between till I was happy with it. Then um, I went through and I stamped the image with archival black and when I rub you can actually see the image still fades. Can you see that? The image is actually fading. As I'm rubbing the oxide is going on top of the black and it's fading. Okay, 
So what I then did was then I placed glaze on top of this test piece and then I stamped on top of that. So I have heat set the archival on there and as I rub you'll notice that she does not smudge or fade at all. Okay. So it makes things waterproof, even though, and archival is usually waterproof anyway, but it lasts much longer on the distress after a coat of glaze as opposed to before a coat of glaze. Okay, so that's that set there. So the last set that I wanted to show you that I worked on um, was these three colours. So pickled raspberry squeezed lemonade and seedless preserves I love these I usually stick my sponges on the back with a little bit of velcro um, so sometimes when I stack them the colors go on top okay it doesn't seem to it doesn't bother me very much but <laughs> other people it bothers a lot so what I've actually done here with this set is that um, I actually used a stencil and I used a stencil um, to apply more color to it before I put so this is before glaze and this is after glaze but perhaps I didn't put enough um, color through on top so that the stencil actually stands out more on this piece but you can see the stencil more um, on this piece here so these are the two but what I was thinking I'd like to do now to show you or to work it out myself as I was thinking I wonder if I can apply more oxide on top of the glazed piece as we're talking now and then if I heat set again or glaze again so this is a dusty attic stencil that I'm using here um, DA1488 I have hammered it and used it a fair bit so um, just excuse the condition I guess uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use squeeze lemonade again because I really like the yellow and I'm going to see if it can if the glaze actually resists or if it lets me put some more color down on top of this stencil. I might have to push quite hard to see if I can actually get some color down on top of this stencil or through this stencil but we'll see if it works. Mm, sort of. Not sure if you can see it. You can see some of the color on top which is great so I'd probably have to heat set that first before I check it to see whether it's smudged or not so excuse the noise while I have a little bit of a go at heat setting this So maybe I didn't set it enough, but I almost feel like I can rub the ink off because the oxide um, isn't a permanent ink, um, it doesn't sit well on top. So I could probably rub most of that off so it doesn't sit well or stay on top of that glaze because it's a now a smooth waterproof surface and these are a water-based pigment ink pigment um, dye based ink so it doesn't stay on top whereas if I was to probably stencil with a bit of archival or a permanent ink I'd say that would stay on top so I hope this helped and answered a few of your questions um, yes and if you have any more questions please feel free to um, put a comment down there Thank you.